And it says we are going live, and it says you're live. Howdy, hi, folks. We haven't been here in a couple weeks. Uh, first thing I'm doing is uh, I haven't responded to people on the YouTube. You get the YouTube. What's that mean? The YouTube. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so uh, for all those people that did reply on there, we appreciate all the thoughts and everything that's on there. Uh, had a good time last weekend. I will say for that uh, weekend, that week up to that, I did not study the Bible at all. I know that some religious people right there that would blow their mind thinking he, he went a day. Oh, my God, he went a day with us. So he's going to hell in a handbasket. I refreshed my mind and uh, didn't think. doesn't say that I didn't think about the Lord or the Bible. I didn't know, open up the Bible. Anyway, why did I say the YouTube? Because... Uh, that makes the YouTube, the word YouTube, a noun, and the a definite article. Okay, so uh, the reason I say that, I've had a lot of conversations this week with people and reading a lot of things, and they always say the Antichrist. You cannot find in your Bible anywhere where it's used a definite article, the, to describe the noun Antichrist. You see and or something like that. The would make that an individual the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is not an individual, or it would say, duh, implying or pointing out the noun Antichrist. So that's what the, a lot of this is about here today, is pointing out these error that uh, most people use, uh, because you can't find the word Antichrist in Revelation. You only find it in First and Second John. But they import, as they do, they import antichrist into revelation as they import this button now back here into the dispensation of the gospel you can't you're not in the import business folks stop importing words where they do not belong uh another one i had found out when i was uh, previously in the trucking uh, industry uh my own trucks i had a truck that literally just cost me uh 160 grand for a sixty thousand dollar truck and uh, my son uh, went to Mizzou and was talking one night. He said, well, Dad, that's called sunk cost fallacy. I said, well, son, I don't know what that is. He said, what that is, is you keep putting money into this thing, this truck, and expecting or looking at getting that back out of that. You're in a sunk cost fallacy. I said, well, I don't have any other options huh, because I've got so much in it. He said, that's the definition of sunk cost fallacy. I've got so much in this. One of these days, it's got to pay off. That's, folks, these people over here importing the button now back to here are in a sunk cost fallacy. They're in so deep that they have no other option but to continue on. They can't change because if they change, they may have to change some writings. They may have to change some videos or anything. So a sunk cost fallacy doesn't also apply to uh, your financial situation or something like that. It also uh, applies to doctrine. Anyway, uh, I had another conversation. I've had a couple conversations with him lately this week, and uh, I'm, I got to read this. And it's the topic that we've been on here for weeks now. I normally scroll on by his post because I don't want to deal with the guy. Uh, but I just had to comment when I seen this ridiculous comment that he put. And I'm going to read it direct to you. Uh, he's responding to some other uh, dude right here. He said, from Paul's salvation day, who are being saved, Paul become the pattern. That's typical mid-acts. He called himself nine. So we go ahead. Can you really call him a mid-acts dispensations? I would have to call him a third-acts dispensations because nine uh, you got 28, 9 into 28 is 3.13 or something like that. mid acts would be around uh, Acts 14.1, so he's a, uh, a one-thirder Acts. I'm, I'm going to call him that, I guess. And uh, so he says, for say become the pattern, thus he becomes the first member of the body of Christ because a new pattern started on that day and thereafter. Well, folks, we've been going through here. I've yet to find, basically it's the same thing that what they said there. I didn't get that from, they got the same sheet of music, folks. They all sing the same tune, all of them. They don't change it. And but what's that say? Acts 9, and we're going to look at it in a minute. 
Go to here and you will be told what you must do. Apparently, this Dr. John did not get the memo. I'm going to tell you why. This is what he says in the same post. God never asked him, Paul, to go to the Jews first and to the Gentiles. So I had to respond to that ridiculous post. God never, you're right. God didn't ask Paul, Billy, squat. He told Paul what to do. He commanded Paul what to do. He didn't ask Paul, do you really want to go to the Jews first, Paul? Do you? Jesus Christ did not do that. He knocked that man off that horse that day, blinded that man, and that blindness was an act of mercy, folks. He didn't ask him what to do. Let's go to it. Acts 9. Oh, let's see. Acts 9. Acts 9, verse 6. And we will slow down, tell people we have paper Bibles on the table tonight. That's good. We will slow down till I stop hearing rustling of papers. And it sounds like we fit there. Acts 9, 6. And he trembling. Who's trembling? Saul lying on that ground now. And astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Well, Paul, I'm just going to ask you, what do you want to do today? It doesn't say that. This is what it says. And the Lord said unto him, who? Paul, lying on that ground, blinded, trembling, shaking in his boots. Arise and go into the city, he says, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Told thee. Now let's go to Acts 13 where you find any way place in your Bible where Paul goes to any God-fearing Gentile, which is a Greek in your King James Bible, which, by the way, Romans 1.16 says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul says in Acts 13, it was necessary that I go to you first, just the same as Peter did. It's necessary that I go to you first. Acts 13, around Acts 13, 47. Let's go to start in verse 46. So we get the context and the flow of who is being spoken to and of speaking about. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God shall first have been spoken to you. Necessary. But seeing ye, Israelites, put it away from you and judge yourselves unworthy. Folks, here's a word right here we're going to get into here tonight. Unworthy of everlasting life. It's life or death. That's the only two options. Life or death. You're unworthy. You judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Those God-fearing ones there in that synagogue. Verse 47. For so the Lord commanded us. He didn't say, Paul and Barnabas, what would you guys like to do today? Where would you like to go and speak to whom? He commanded us. And this is out of Isaiah 46, 49, verse 6, folks. You can go there. This is about the preservation and restore the nation of Israel. I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvations until the ends of the earth. We've gone through that. You can go back and research it yourself. So one, if any man, if any man be in Christ we got a sub-series going on here today, folks. It's probably going to take me, oh, probably today and next week to get this done. Within Paul's or Saul's Old Testament conversion. So we can sit there and see just by Scripture. If you believe the words on your pages, Christ didn't ask Paul anything. He told him to go to Damascus, and you will be told, told what to do. He commanded Paul and Barnabas. He didn't ask anything. Christ does not ask any mortal anything. You have the option to believe what he said, or you don't. That's on you. So, everlasting life. Let's go. If any man be in Christ, we're going to find out what in Christ and to whom in Christ is. And what's that mean? Let's go to 2 Timothy 1.
one one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Folks, what you are going to find, if you will just do some word searching, I know that's called proof texting to some people. You go over here, and you go over here, and you go to the supposed ages to come, and we're going to look at one of the verses tonight in your Bible, and look up the words in Christ. And then you compare those multiple, and I don't even have them all on this board that we're going to go through, of where Paul says in Christ, and compare that to uh, these certain dispensations want to beat you over the brow about, well, as he did, body of Christ, body of Christ. Is Paul really out there beating people over the head about the body of Christ? Or is he saying there's life in Christ? We're going to look at that tonight. As I have here, right here. In Christ. Everlasting life, he tells Timothy. 1 9. 2 Timothy 1 9. Who, Christ, hath saved us. Now, who's this us here, folks? Paul's writing a personal letter to Timothy, as he did in Titus 3, in Titus 2, Titus, and then in Titus 3, 5. We've gone through that, saved us by mercy. Timothy was the same way. Who has saved us? And, whoa, you got to be kidding me here. If Romans 2, 5, Laman is all about me, and Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I believe, 124, that the called are the Jews and also the Greek. Where do I fit in there? Does this really apply to me right here? Well, let's look at it. Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. Sounds similar to Titus 3, 5 to me. Really does. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Verse 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death. You're either in Adam with death, or you're in Christ with life. That's your two options, folks. And you have to make that determination prior to that last breath. Do I stay in Adam, or do I find myself in Christ? And uh, who hath brought life, he speaks of abolished death here, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. <clears throat> Verse 18 of this very chapter. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. Well, we got to find out what that day is. Just read right here. I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, you sure it's not this day or is it that day? Who's finding mercy when and where? And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus? Thou knowest very well. I will be touching on some of these things that we've gone over through the conversion of Saul. And I'll be pointing them out like the called and this mercy. Let's go to, let's start our in Christ. And people are going to think, how can you start in Peter and think about being in Christ? Well, let's look at Peter's own words. But before we do this, we're going to go to 2 Peter. And we're going to look at 2 Peter 3. That entire chapter is about Peter speaking about the imminent return of Christ. And let's see what Peter says about this. Then we'll jump over to 1 Peter. These are just some of the topics, folks, that I've had to endure this week, listening to these third gracers, mid-axers, whatever that portion of the mid-axe they want to call themselves, the stuff that they can come up with to keep up with that sunk cost fallacy. 
And Peter in 2 Peter 3, 15. Remember, folks, all the way through this chapter, he's talking about one thing, the imminent return of Christ. And you can go back and study for yourself. We're going to start in verse probably, uh, uh, start in verse 14. Wherefore, the imminent, I am just spoke to you about the imminent return of Christ. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, what things? The imminent return of Christ, those things. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. I can guarantee you, you can go to first, around 1 Corinthians 1, 7, 8, something like that. Paul speaks about those people in uh, 1 Corinthians as being blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul also concerning to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. Say again. According to the wisdom concerning. According to the wisdom given unto Paul. I don't know what I said. Bet my wife just corrected me. That's fine. I'll go back and read again. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Peter says, Paul did write to him. You either believe that or you don't. Doesn't make any difference to me. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. What things is Peter speaking about here? The same things as up in verse 14. The and previous to wherefore, the imminent return of Christ. Romans 16 20. Lily said she sent a message out to Columbus, Ohio last week and about Romans 16 20, and she got a reply back, but it did not mention Romans 16 20. And they open up a new facility today to keep teaching these things. And she got a lot of lawyer talk being a former lawyer that's what they do speaking of the and these things in which some things are hard to understood now paul's mystery right there in first corinthians 15 and in thessalonians they knew about resurrection but how in the world we which are alive that's what peter probably thought was hard to understand how is god going he didn't tell us that he did we know about the resurrection of the dead these are some of the things, folks. But listen, what Peter says, if Paul's writing about these things, I'm speaking about those things. And these things I'm speaking about are the imminent return of Christ. What Peter says. Verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they, the majority, of these people to say bash people over the head about not rightly dividing these people fit into this verse it was saying hard to understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction they fit into that verse because they don't believe romans 16 20 they don't believe acts 14 would go through great tribulation into the kingdom of god paul was saying Find you blameless. They don't believe that. Anyway, 1 Peter 5, 14. Before we get into Paul, we're going to see what Peter says here. And it's the uh, last verse of uh, 1 Peter. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Now, we're going to go to Acts 18 right now uh, because we will be getting into Priscilla and Aquila. And I have it written over here. And, uh, folks, now say, well, Paul didn't write uh, Acts, so we can't do anything about that in 17 he's going uh, to the thessalonians only preaching the gospel of god which if you read romans in that time frame is paul's gospel and that is the gospel that he speaks of which is the gospel of christ also and i know uh lily just posted something but uh i'm making a clarification here today that uh the romans 10 13 if you just believe that christ died and rose again or you don't even say that just believe with, and confess it with all your heart with your mouth and believe that christ 
rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I have to ask you folks, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, why is that not in the book of Romans? Where can you find where 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 is called the gospel of Christ? Just some questions I got to throw out there. Because he says, confess with your mouth something. What's he confessing? And this is Paul's gospel, folks, back in Acts ministry in Romans. And believe that he raised him from the dead and thou shall be saved. But you get these bastards out there. Well, he didn't say that. He meant that. Well, what where do you find chapter and verse for this stuff at? When you sit, and it's a question, folks, and I've done it, call me. I need chapter and verse for that comment. And this is what you get. Crickets, 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 and crickets. While they're trying to send you to another YouTube, so you can watch an hour, waste an hour of your time to verify what they just said. I don't have that time, folks, anymore. Anyway, Acts 13, uh, I'm sorry, Acts 18, and in verse 5, this is about Paul. <clears throat> and he finds Aquila and Priscilla. They just came from, they got kicked out of Rome by Claudius the emperor at that time. He kicked every Jew out of Rome. It wasn't the first time they ever done that, but Claudius did this one here. It even says it in the beginning of Acts right here. And down in verse 5, and when Silas and Timotheus uh, were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit and testified to the Jews. Wait a minute. They will tell you that they went to the Gentiles. First, or the necessity, well, I went to the Gentiles. There's no Jews. Then why they go to the Jews first? Because God told him to do that, commanded him, and testified that Jesus, you got to be kidding me, folks. You mean he's not preaching the but now in Ephesians and Colossians? Oh, back here in Acts 18:5. He is, what did he say? That Jesus was Christ. What is Christ? Christ is Messiah. Acts 9, verse 20, where Paul started out, he's the son of God, the Messiah. And here, still nine chapters later, almost when he writes the book of Romans and the Corinthian letters, he's still going to Jews doing what? It says it. That Jesus was the Christ. Well, why didn't he speak about Christ being the head of the body? Do you see that anywhere in here? Well, okay. Let's go at the end of uh, at 18. This is speaking about Apollos because Apollos just came in. Oh, he was eloquent in speech like some JJ up there in the, and, and the three that's up there. Oh, them cornfields. They are elegant in speech, folks. They wear the finest suits. They're smooth as silk. But they don't believe half this stuff. They're just like Apollos. Apollos needed an update. Priscilla and Aquila updated his software to 3.0 from 1.0. In uh, verse uh, 28, for he mightily convinced the Jews. Who is he? Apollos. Just read above. You'll find out. And that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. Why is he not then importing, dragging back that butt now from Ephesians, Colossians, because Paul had already been with Priscilla and Quilla. They knew exactly what Paul was teaching. Why are they not pulling these back here into the Acts ministry of Paul? Why not? Well, you're a heretic, Rick. I had a tick the other day, I think. I don't know if it's a heretic or uh, a hematic. It was a tick. No, that's all I can say. My wife is looking at me like, that's got to be the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I didn't think about saying it until just now. So you get a little bit of humor. Uh -huh. <laughs> very little. <laughs> Harry says very little, but that's okay. If you get any out of me at all, you better thank goodness. Amen. I mean, okay, yeah. let's go to the saints. And I do call them saints as the ones that in Ephesians 1 because the Philippians were saints. And we will look at that uh, here shortly. Uh, Philippians 4.21. <clears throat> 
Remember, our focus right here uh, is in Christ. Philippians 4.21. And my wife is still looking. And between Ephesians and Colossians. No, we stop. We, I, I promise I'm just going to slow down. And when that last page rattles. And verse 21, salute every saint in Christ Jesus, Paul writes. The brethren which are with me greet you, every saint. We'll go ahead while we're in Philippians. I have it up here on the board. We're going to go ahead and go to Philippians 1.1. We'll probably come back to it again. Philippians 1.1. <clears throat> Paul and Timotheus. The servants of Jesus Christ to all the faithful in Christ. Why doesn't Paul say to all the faithful in Jesus Christ as he does to the saints and also to the faithful in Christ as he does the Ephesians? But he doesn't say that. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Uh, another question for you is, uh, was Peter a saint? Well, Paul defines himself as the least of all saints. Let's go to Ephesians 1.12. This is not where Harry fits in, Ephesians 1.12. There's no way possible Harry can fit in the Ephesians 1.12. Folks, if you'll look at these pronouns, especially in chapter 2, you'll have the us's and you'll have the we's. And then all of a sudden, Paul comes to a both. But anyway, that's another day, another topic that we, well, let's go to verse 11, pick up some of the more the context. It's a. It's a long sentence up through there, but we're going to cut right in the middle of the sentence. In whom, of course, it has to be Christ. Also, we have an attained inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who walk, worketh all things out of counsel of his own will. Not asking, Paul, what would you like? Where would you like to go and speak to whom you want to speak to? This is not a tour of who you want to speak to. It's what you were told to do. Verse 12, that we... Who's this we? Well, Paul's going to tell you, and we're going to look at that, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Because there's a context here, folks. You have a period then after this long sentence. And then he goes into, you have a we, and then he said, oh, but look at verse for it, in whom ye, another group, not the saints, but the faithful in Christ, you all, y'all, the further you get down south, you go further south, you got you all. Then you get down further down south, it's y'all. Ye. Romans 16, verse 7. We're finding out about this in Christ, folks. Uh, Peter's writing at the end of the last verse of uh, uh, First Peter. Salute them that are in Christ. But those, that's ages to come, right? That's what they say. Hebrews through Revelation is ages to come. I'm confused. I not only have to scratch my head with one back scratcher, with so many people or people out there, I got to scratch my head with both back scratchers because I can't keep up with the, uh, the all the stuff they have going on out there. I, I try. Romans 16, uh, verse 7. Salute Andronicus. And Junia, my kinsman, his kinsman, so they had to be Israelites according to the flesh, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among apostles. Which apostles? You think the ones that are in Christ also? Those apostles? There wasn't that many apostles, folks, so it's not hard to narrow that down. Who also 
I guess I've told that before, but I'm going to go ahead and tell this. When I was driving on the road, I'd stop at these truck stops. Flying J was one of my favorites. I had to get free coffee and stuff, showers, when I fueled up with them. And then most of them had Denny's. I'd go in. At that time, they had a grilled chicken, uh, a grilled chicken salad. And uh, it had a romaine lettuce in it. And I, at that time, they put avocado on it. Uh, they didn't charge extra for that. And I'd say, also, and a piece of salmon, grilled salmon. I'd come back. It'd come out there. If they didn't have a recall on romaine lettuce, which most of the time, it would come up with no chicken. I would look at it. I said, where's my chicken? You said, you want a piece of salmon? I said, no, what I really, what I did say, I said, I want a grilled chicken salad. The first two words were grilled chicken, I want that salad. Also, add is another key indicator, a piece of grilled. They never could catch on to that. So I had to, I could, I went flip flopping between also and two. It was a struggle out there, folks, just to try to get my grilled chicken salad with a also add a grilled piece of salmon. Frustrating. Really. And it's the same thing here, folks. Uh, you're dealing with these folks that do not want to believe grammar. They want to add words to. Take words that's not in a book, place it in that book. So we're going to read this again. Salute them who were in Christ before me. There's somebody in Christ, Paul says, before me. Do you think it's those who first trusted Paul was speaking of? Well, let's narrow this down some more, folks. Let's get that stick out. Let's whittle that thing down and find, get that point on that thing to a real point. Let's go to Galatians 1. I know, God, oh, you step into Galatians 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, oh, my God, uh, they come up with some stuff here, folks. And when you get into chapter 2, uh, oh, the gospel of the uncircumcision and the gospel of the circumcision, and they get on all this stuff, folks, that was a direction they were going. Paul went to the Jew and also to the Greek who were uncircumcised. But that's another study for a different day, Galatians 1. They have their own little world, let's just say that. And Lily and I are continuing in the world, being she's more so, uh, I was in and out of it, not, I wouldn't say a diehard, maybe like she was. She was listening to one, the film field uh, cornfield for five straight years anyway be that as it may uh, galatians 1 22 folks listen to these words right here in these two verses just slow down pay it they're not very big words if i can understand these there are very few syllables i can understand the fewer the syllables the better for me and was unknown well let's start in 21 Afterwards, I came. Who's the I? Paul's writing a letter, so it's him. Into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, up in Paul's uh, hometown, uh, Tarsus and Cilicia, and was unknown by face. That means they did not know Paul by face. Unto the churches of Judea. Where is Judea? It surrounds Jerusalem, Israel. I was unknown. Unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Verse 23. But they had heard only the churches of Judea that were in Christ before Paul was in Christ. They have life. Romans 4 would tell you about the Adam and Christ. That he, Paul, which persecuted us, the churches of Judea, in Christ before Paul, in times past. Now, folks, if something new happened here, because God changed the method of salvation when he called Saul. They say that. But this verse right here says, 
totally, 100% differently. Let's finish it. I'll start the top again. But they had heard only that he was persecuted us in times past. Now, he now, which is Saul or Paul, preacheth the faith which he once destroyed. Well, what did Paul destroy? That he is now preaching. Well, all you got to do is go to Acts 18.5, Acts 17. You can start out there, and you can go all the way back to where supposedly something new happened in Acts 9, verse 20, preaching the Son of God, that he's the Messiah in the synagogues. That's exactly the faith that he destroyed. That's exactly what Paul was preaching. And he says it right there. But you refuse to believe that. You call the apostle that you claim to follow a liar. And you have to deal with that in your conscience. You're twisting scripture, as Peter said, to fit your sunk cost fallacy. Philippians 1 1, we already looked at that. Now let's go to Thessalonian letter, folks. First Thessalonians. Right before Timothy, was do you have a paper Bible? Right after Colossians. Chapter 2. 1 Timothy, First Thessalonians 2. And we'll be looking at uh, verses 13 and 14. For this cause, what cause? Well, look in verse 12. You can see some causes right there. Also think we... God without ceasing, because when ye, the Thessalonians, received the word of God, which ye heard of us, the ones presenting the word of God, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, you Thessalonians, not me, not you, Thessalonians, brethren, became followers of the churches of God. You can find that churches of God, Paul wrote also to in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, which in Judea, those churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, the Jews, even as they have of us, of the Jews. Verse 15. Who, the Jews, both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men. Folks in Judea, Jerusalem, that churches of God that Paul speaks of when he mentions that were in Christ before Saul. And he was persecuting those in Christ, destroying that faith which they preached. But now the, the faith he destroyed, he's now preaching. And yet you want to tell me that something because God changed a method of salvation when he called Paul or Saul at that time. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. This one right here, folks, is the one that uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is controversial chapter um, for a lot of things that's in 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, but we're going to look at one of them here tonight. 517, if you know anything about your Bible, or grace circles anyway, you know exactly where I'm going. And there's a little bitty three-letter word in here, folks, that people just skip over, or I don't know. Paul says there and says there was people in Christ before him. He tells you where these people were, down in Judea. Peter says, salute them and kiss them with a holy kiss, those that are in Christ Jesus. Now, let's read this verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 
17. Therefore, what's that therefore, therefore? Well, there's a wherefore also in 16. We might look into that just a little bit here. But um, let's start in 17. Therefore, if that three-letter word, any. Therefore, if any man. Do you think that included Peter and to whom he was writing to in First uh, First Peter? They were in Christ. Do you think that any man pertains to those churches of God in Judea that were in Christ who first trusted that Paul speaks of those saints? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, folks, I used to. Uh, Badger people or the word all. Does all really mean all? Or do we have to look at the context of all? Uh, I'm pointing out some of my ignorance in the past. Uh, if we look at this verse right here, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, at that time, Paul wrote this letter at approximately Acts 20. Was there a new earth? Was there a new heaven? Was there a new uh, was there new grass? Because Paul wrote that about this right here. Was all things really become new, or what's the context of what we're talking here? If any man, including Peter, including the other eleven apostles, and all those thousands that were saved during that time that were in Christ before Paul, if any man, any he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Well, we can go to Romans 4 and find out, well, what, what did pass away? Well, I'm no longer, if I accepted that he was a Messiah, I'm no longer in Adam. That is old. That did pass away. What is new now? I am now in Christ. Let's go to verse 15. And here it says it. All, let's start, no, let's start in 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, Christ, then all were dead. You can go to Ephesians uh, 2 and check out who the dead person people are he, who he's talking about here. It's those little bitty pronouns, folks. And that he died for all. Who's the all when Paul's writing this? Acts 13, 23 tells you exactly who he was speaking to at this time, that all. He sent to Israel a Savior, Jesus. That's to all then. That they which live shall not henceforth, henceforth from this point on, live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Do you think Paul knew Christ after the flesh? Well, he says he did. We know no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, the we, who's that we here? Paul includes himself in that we. Yet now there henceforth know we know him no more. He knows a risen Christ because the earthly uh, flesh, Christ, did not knock him off that horse. The one that was brighter than the noonday sun that day. Anyway, if any man be in Christ, in Christ are the very important words there, folks. In Christ, he's that new creature Paul speaks of here. Because remember, he's in 2 Corinthians now. If we let's go back to 1 Corinthians 1, that we can find pick up the context who Paul's writing these letters to. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 2, who's Paul writing to that? If any man be in Christ, who's he include here? Unto the church of the God, which is at Corinth. What well, we found out uh, weeks ago, who church, and then you find out there's church of the God in Judea. Jerusalem. To them that are sanctified, what's it say? In Christ. Part. In Christ, Jesus called, we're going by the King James uh, version right here, 
called to be saints, as in, I believe, Romans 1, 7, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. All that call upon a name. I believe you can find that Romans 10. I believe you can find that back in Joel chapter 2. Though the call on the name of the Lord. Paul is speaking to various groups of people here, folks. And he said, if any of you are in any man in this groups that I'm speaking to are in Christ. He doesn't say, oh, we've beaten people up, badged them it, about in the body of Christ. In Christ, you've passed from old Adam into, and he tells you prerequisites, just believe that he died and rose. Ephesians 2.6. Ephesians 2. A lot of pronouns in here, folks, that you need to pay close attention to. Most people skim over them, especially uh, first, uh, Ephesians 1 and verse 1 and verse 2, and they think, well, it all applies to me. Well, there's an and in there. It's called a conjunction. And if you don't know what a conjunction is, go look it up. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? It's a three-and-a-half-minute video, folks, that will help you with those conjunctions. One is just as important as the other. Anyway, Ephesians 2, 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Or in, it says here, in Jesus Christ. Or Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1, 1. We're going to go ahead and read that. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and those saints, Paul, those saints, Peter, those saints, those other thousands that were saved on the day of Pentecost, all the way back to Luke, uh, I believe, uh, 22, 23, right in that area. Oh, they first trusted. They did. They said, we trusted that he was who he said he was. We don't see him in there now. In the tomb, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. So you had saints back there that were in Christ. If you really want to research and do your study, or you just keep believing the hogwash that you hear, those saints in Christ and the faithful in Jesus Christ. There are two different groups he's speaking to here. And you have to look at Ephesians as two different groups that are being spoken to here until you get to the both in chapter 2. Let's go to Romans 3. We're going to spend a few minutes here in Romans. I've read also last week that, oh boy, you get a new convert, you better start him out in Romans. Then go to Ephesians. I was thinking, oh my goodness. How are they ever going to believe that Abraham is my, if they get the Romans 4-1, how are they ever going to believe that Abraham is my father in the flesh? How are, we, how are they going to do it? How do you reconcile that in your mind? When you don't even have any Jew blood in you. I, I don't know. Anyway, it took me years to figure that out myself. Romans 3-24. Oh, Romans 3-24. Being justified freely. You just had a conversation uh, uh, with the same Yehu that um, uh, with the uh, Christ at Nash Paul. Um, and he's got a uh, ministry over in India. I uh, started a, a school there, and I pity those poor people, actually. But uh, uh, the confusion is going to carry on um, about when is sin forgiven. And uh, he couldn't answer any of my questions. Uh, but then uh, everybody wants to lead you to Brian Ross's uh, videos he makes about the, you know, nice Bibles and everything and all this stuff. And I asked this one chick, she messaged me there. She said, well, I don't know why people just don't want to go and watch Brian Ross's videos. I said, well, why do I need to go? I don't need to go watch another man's videos to find out definitions of words. Why do I want to believe him? Why don't I just believe the Bible? 
Why can't I do that? I don't want you to believe anything I say, folks. I want you to take what this book says and analyze it and study it out. And you believe what it says. And if I don't say what it says, I'm not necessarily a heretic as they all want to call you. Maybe I didn't think it through. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I'm just lying and don't know it. <clears throat> Romans 3.24 being justified freely by his grace through redemption, that is in Christ Jesus. Folks, I had one old boy down there, and he said, I'm not mainstream man, but I'm a man axe. Well, yeah, they were in Christ, but only redemption. Well, folks, that's this whole book right here is about redemption. It's about Jesus Christ and having redemption in Jesus Christ, in Christ. Of course it's about redemption if you're in Christ. But they twist words. The whole book is about redemption. And you got to know where you fit in. It is. It's a free gift. And with the new dog we got, I'm getting a little loud. She's getting scared. My wife had to, may have to console her. Pet her, if you will, Beth. She's getting scared. I didn't even think about her. Uh, we think uh, we took her on as a... Uh, uh, she was in a, a house that uh, the old boy took her to work with. Said, uh, "Well, she hates cats." And her wife said, "I'm not getting rid of the cats, so you got to get rid of the dog." And so uh, my wife said, "Well, we can foster her for a while, but uh, we don't foster anything around here. She needs a home. Uh, she she's We're not ha for a home. She's, she's not Harry, but Harry is Harry. But she is Harry to the fact that she is a German Shepherd and she is Harry, and she loses a lot of hair. Be that as it may, uh, that's another sub series within a sub series about my." Uh, what around here anyway? Uh, Romans 5 17. I got off on a tangent there. <laughs> Romans 5 17. For if by one man's offense death reign, who is that one man? That is Adam, though he did not eat of that fruit first, Eve did. He, Adam, is still blamed for the fall of man. God told Adam, do not eat, and you tell Eve. So it's Adam is talking about this death. Reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of his gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. You can put in Christ Jesus right there, and you wouldn't hurt to in or by or just as the King James Version says, Jesus Christ. It's a gift of righteousness. That's what you get versus death in Adam being in Christ. Romans 6, 23. Oh, they can quote this one here. Oh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord or in Christ Jesus. There's where you get your eternal life, folks today is through Jesus Christ what he did or in Christ the topic of this series Romans 8 1 and 2 oh boy Romans 8 we've stepped on some toes with Romans 8 we're just, just we'll step on some more toes with Romans 8 there is therefore there's that word again what's that therefore therefore whether you got to read Romans 1 through 7 to get the context of whom Paul is speaking to, and I got to say, folks, it's not you. Now, redemption by justification is something that goes started with Adam, folks. Righteousness by faith before the law. Paul speaks about that in Romans. That carries all the way through. It crosses boundaries of dispensations. Therefore, now... There is therefore now no condemnation them which are in where? Does it say in the body of Christ? As they want to continue beating you up over? I read a post this week that I don't know how many people on even here we are going to, on the same fellow's post. How many people are leaving these RD? They call them RD, rightly dividing uh, groups out there because uh, uh, of the market avoid scam. They're so ungracious, as I've said, there's nothing more ungracious in this world than a grace believer. Folks, once they think they caught a glimpse of something, they'll beat you over the head with it, and you're not as good as if you're even saved. 
I, I got the big five popped up. I didn't think we'd make it all the way through here. That, that's why I said into the next uh, week on in Christ. Rome, uh, so in Romans, uh, that was a uh, uh, 623. Again, for the wage of sin is death, but to get to God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, no, we're at Romans 8 and 1. I'm sorry. And in Christ Jesus, who walk not out of the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life. See, there's life, folks. That's what Paul is speaking about in Romans. That's what Paul is speaking about in Corinthians. That's what he's talking about in Galatians. That's what he's talking about throughout his Acts period ministry. And that's what he's speaking about in after Acts in the post uh, in his uh, prison epistles. Life in Christ. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. It's made you free from death. In Christ. There was people in Christ before Paul. He says it. Romans 12, 5. We're now beyond, in Romans 12, beyond the supposed hypothetical of Romans 9, 10, and 11. So we, who's Paul speaking to here? He and the Romans, being many, there's many, and probably his entourage, are now are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. But in, to be of this in Christ's body back here during the Acts ministry, look what you had to have in the next verse. Having then, if you're in that body of believers, the in Christ back then, you had something that we do not have today. Having then gifts differing. Oh. There's a stepping stone for some people. According to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to proportion of faith. When's the last time you prophesied if Romans 12 is about you? We went on that. Uh, the first verse up there, when have you ever put your bodies as a living sacrifice? When did you ever have a sacrifice that you offered to God? 16.3, Romans 16.3. Paul's in his salute here, and he throws some strange stuff for some folks in Romans 16. And here we find, uh, again, the people out of Acts 18, kicked out of Rome by Claudius. <clears throat> Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Do you want to know how Apollos in 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it was 3, uh, how Paul could plant and Apollos could water? You want to know how they could all do that? They were on the same sheet of music, folks. And this verse right here, and this verse right here tells you exactly what sheet of music they were on. It's your choice whether you want to believe that or not. Your Bible says it, but do you believe it? As I said two weeks ago, you don't have to understand it. But by God, you better believe it. And once you believe it, you'll have that faith. That's what faith is. Believe what God said. I believe it. First Corinthians 1, 2, we want to read over that. The bet, we want to go to all those people that we looked at. Romans 16, verse 7. Again, we're in Romans 16 now. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are note among those apostles. Who also were in Christ before me. They had life before me. 1 Corinthians 1.30. Just a page over if you have a paper Bible. Uh, 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. There's that word again, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And who are these people 
that Paul is speaking to right here that are in Christ. As I'm fixing to wrap it up with verse 124 of that chapter. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 24. Who are these people that were in Christ? Who are these people that first trusted in Christ? Paul speaks of in Ephesians 1, 12. But unto them which are called. I think we had a calling up here. And probably in Philippians, I believe, somewhere. We had a calling up here. Somebody's called. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, you can find them in Romans 1, 16, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And as we always conclude here, folks, when we try to clear the mud, get it off your feet, we try to rightly divide the word of truth. And that's a wrap. I want to see those. Uh,